prepare for Hurricane Milton. They're still reeling from Hurricane Helene, and it's impacting us right here in western New York. Catholic Health now canceling most elective surgeries for the rest of the week because of a shortage of IV liquids. It's because of flood damage at a key medical supply facility in North Carolina. Baxter Pharmaceutical, they make 60% of the country's IV fluid. So far, ECMC and Roswell both tell us they have enough supplies for now. And now we have, joining me from Oshai Children's Hospital, Medical Director Dr. Stephen Turkovich, Oshai a Kaleida Health Facility. Mm -hmm. Catholic Health says they're seeing some of it, they're trying to do what they can. What are you guys seeing with this shortage? So we're unfortunately uh, across Clyde, including Oshai Children's Hospital, affected by this. We've gotten about 40% of what we usually get from an allocation. So we put together new clinical protocols to make sure that we can rehydrate children in particular using oral uh, fluids. Gatorade in particular is really, really effective. Um, and also potentially looking to cancel some uh, purely elective surgeries, especially those that would require a lot of IV fluid mm -hmm. and making sure that we are saving those for the traumas that we unfortunately get for pregnant women um, and those other people that really need potentially large amounts of IV fluid. This is a day by day, minute by minute kind of situation. Obviously right now you guys are planning, you know, what happens if this continues days, weeks down the line? So it's, we're in full emergency emergency management mode with multiple calls each day looking at uh, how much we actually have, how much we think is coming. We're in contact with uh, advocacy groups and working with the federal government to hopefully declare a national shortage of IV fluids and then hopefully open up some avenues that aren't available right now, including um, IV fluids from other countries. Um, but right now we are really managing this day to day and if we have to cancel more procedures and surgeries in the future, we will do that in order to make sure we have what we need for those in the most need. Yeah, really important. One other thing now, we told you earlier the show how a number of attorneys general are suing TikTok. 95% of kids 13 to 17 say they use social media. More than a third of those say they use it constantly. You know, what's the impact of social media on a kid's mental health? And do you have any messages for parents with this new lawsuit coming out? So yeah, uh, social media in particular, I think, is built in order to really addict children. Um, to TikTok, not only, um, but others as well. If you think about Snapchat and the streaks that you have in order to sort of make sure you can communicate with as many people every day and you get rewarded with that, the algorithms really reinforce potentially some very negative behaviors. On TikTok, we've seen some of the really unsafe challenges that they challenge kids to do, um, body dysmorphic um, things that come from um, maybe body dysmorphic disorder, eating disorders, um, depression and anxiety. The algorithms really drive you down once you have sort of a negative path to more and more things that reinforce it. So having those open and honest conversations with parents is really important, um, both safety, um, but also making sure that use is not excessive. So trying to maximize all those parental controls that you have is really important, but I, I personally think that they're not really effective. Um, I think what we really need is more advocacy and work at the federal level to limit use. And it's something we talk about a lot, but I think the more we talk about it, the more parents hear about it and talk to their kids about it, hopefully we can get some good things going on. Dr. Steve Tegervich, yeah. thank you so much always for keeping us thank on top you. of things, and thank you so much for coming in. My pleasure.